Servus Männer, it's Red Pill Germany again. Yesterday, our glorious parliament, the Bundestag, voted in favor of our first German jab mandate. It is not a general jab mandate for everybody, like they want to do it in Austria. It is also not like in the Czech Republic, where it's for everyone over the age of 60, but it is for um, yeah, people who work in the uh, health professions or health workers, that is doctors, nurses, um, etc., paramedics, and so on. Also, um, dental um, clinics, staff, and so on, right? health workers generally. And they have time until the middle of March next year, 2022, to get their full protection, that is three jabs by the current definition of our health minister, newly appointed health minister, Mr. Karl Lauterbach, who is also an MD, I believe. And he said that yeah, nobody should go to jail if they refuse, but he will be talking to economists and psychologists to um, uh, talk uh, well or to de determine um, appropriate fines or the progression of fines in case of refusal or something like that. So he wants to talk to these uh, <laughs> uh, population control uh, um, experts in order to find out how to threaten and how to hurt people in the most efficient way. Uh, our beloved health workers, yeah, who um, yeah, last year people were lining up, uh, applauding them, what heroes they are. <laughs> and now uh, the government is discussing how to intimidate and how to hurt them where it, uh, yeah, or to hit them where it really hurts. Yeah? <laughs> so uh, a, a lot can happen in one year, yeah, as you see. Okay, so that could obviously backfire because our health system, um, not because of any new virus, is in trouble. Our health system is in trouble because, um, yeah, <laughs> it is a, a weird hybrid um, of privatization and state economy or central planned economy. Um, the hospitals are organized uh, in a free market sense. That means they're owned by large stock corp corporations, um, who, yeah, large nationwide, I don't know, international, globalist, I don't know, but at least national um, um, yeah, corporations who own all these hospitals. And um, the thing is, if people are um, publicly insured, then um, there is only a certain fixed amount uh, of uh, money that uh, the hospital can really charge them for certain things. And that creates, of course, a very scarce environment. And uh, I don't want to go into the details too much. I'm also not an expert on that stuff. But um, when you talk to nurses, the story is always, we don't have time to do our work the way we should be doing it from a professional or medical standpoint. Uh, the, there is not enough time. We would like to help. But um, the hospital system at the moment is exploiting the helper syndrome of the nurses pretty much um, so that they do overtime and all these things. When they would do their job like it is defined on paper, then they would not care for the patients appropriately. And most of them because they're human beings <laughs> and because they want to take good care of the patients, they um, yeah, they walk several extra miles and the hospitals know that they do that and they don't care. They, they actually, that's priced in. Yeah? <laughs> I think you get my point. Okay, and so for all these reasons, for many, many reasons, for a, for a long time, um, there are these problems. Uh, and um, also payment uh, in the health sector for nurses especially, not so good, uh, shift work and so on. I think you can imagine it is not a very um, pleasant job at times. So a lot of them quit already and they were quitting before that. Yeah? And now if you put these extra demands, these, these extra requirements on them and treat them like this and threaten them with fines, yeah, maybe some of them, some more of them who were toying with the idea or contemplating quitting, maybe they will really actually quit right now during a scary health crisis. Ooh. So this might 
backfire in a colossal way. I don't know. Um, I don't know how many of them are, um, you know, protected already or how many of them refuse the jab. I have no numbers on that. In the general population, yes, there are the official numbers, but for health workers especially, I don't really know that. So, it remains to be seen. It, it, it is uh, plausible or conceivable that it will backfire, but we, we don't know that yet. And, um, yeah, um, it, it just could um, become really bad. And, of course, we know that this is not um, the end of it. Um, they will extend that, and I mean the government, they will try to extend that. Um, they start with the health workers, maybe, but they will extend that to the general population, um, I'm pretty sure. I mean, that's a prediction of mine, but um, yeah, I think that's what is coming for Germany. And um, in Austria, right now, um, they want to end then the um, yeah this, this lockdown for the jabbed and the um, jab free people they have to remain in lockdown for example so that's another way how they try to divide the people and here in germany they try to do it by uh, putting pressure on health workers and yeah lockdown more or less for everyone else but uh, then people uh, will say and the media will start um, journalists and these um, yeah uh, public figures they will call for a general jab mandate and the politicians are then just just hearing what the people are saying and they are following these requests these urgent demands from the population yeah right okay so and there was also an interesting case i want to add at the end it was a young lady a nurse who worked i think in a morgue of a munich university hospital and she filmed a video from that morgue <laughs> and uh, um, she complained about um other stuff like um, testing and stuff like that uh, so basically in a general sense she also complained about extra requirements for health workers during this uh, so-called crisis and uh, she also predicted that a lot of her colleagues would quit and she said how can you um, make work for health workers even more unattractive when you actually need more nurses right now yeah and there are many of them who could work, but they quit. They just don't need the money or they're married. Uh, they have a husband that makes good money. Haha, <laughs> in many cases, I think that is the case. And uh, they just say, why should I go through this ordeal every day when I could just, you know, uh, do some office work or just uh, take a year off and then look for something or I don't know. Yeah. So I think a lot of them might quit as a result. And that's what she also said. Unfortunately, she lost her job because... Um, well, she complained about health measures by the government and um, I think technically she was fired for filming on the premises and pub publishing that and that is not allowed. A lot of employers don't want that, that you film on the, um, yeah, on site or at your workplace. Um, that's not allowed and uh, I think that is the mistake she made um, and maybe some other stuff she said. I mean, if she had been more intelligent or careful about it, she could have avoided that, but uh, maybe she wanted to go for big effect and show these, um, yeah, and show the morgue. <laughs> maybe that was her plan. Anyway, so um, my point is we have a uh, jab mandate now for health workers starting from or it will be the fines will be enforced from the middle of March next year and uh, let's see what will come um, there could be um, a general jab mandate next but that is the first test case maybe that is how they want to start this all right I keep you posted if there is something new developing here servus kameraden <laughs>